Down Home Sports, covering all the sports in Ellis County. Brought to you by Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Pinnacle Bank, not just another bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Located off of 287 in Middle Odin, Texas. And Doe City Pizza and Burgers. For artisan burgers, pizzas, and ice cream, make sure you go where it's delicious to Doe City Pizza and Burgers, located in Red Oak, right across from the high school. Elite Foot and Body in Middle Odin, Texas, off of 663. Make sure you go to get your body rejuvenated after hard workouts and great competitions. We see the future in her. And as she grows, bonds are bigger. Lessons are learned. We plan for her future with those we trust. So when the day comes and she's ready to soar, she'll do it knowing there's always someone there. Pinnacle Bank, not just a bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. All right, folks, guess what? We got Walks at you, softball. We got Molly Gilbert. We got Marley Jackson. We got Sam Christian and the incomparable, the one and only Coach Al. Coach Al, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How are you? All fat, sassy, and full of vinegar, but not as full of vinegar as Walks at you, softball right now. Let's talk about how excited y'all are about the playoffs that are coming up soon. Well, we're fixing to start uh, tomorrow on the uh, getting ready to go up the totem pole. We're playing Waco High. We got uh, Lake Ridge on Thursday. We got we have the Stoat on Friday, Senior Night. Welcome everybody to come out. But uh, and then we're going to get prepared for the playoffs where uh, we can go up. If we beat Lake Ridge, we can go up one more slot. So we're definitely in. So we're the girls are excited about it, and uh, I am too. Well, and Marley, you know, we talked a little bit before, but. You know, what does this mean to this team that y'all are still in that position to keep raising up your spot as far as the playoffs were? I think that it definitely helps give us – it builds our confidence because ever since the beginning of offseason, we've been trying our hardest to build up as a team and work with new players and new positions. And I think that definitely helps build our confidence that we've gone this far and that – we're getting into playoffs. Like, we're there, and we just need to keep going and keep working our hardest. Well, and Molly, you know, like she mentioned, y'all have changed some positions around throughout the season. You've moved some people around. And you can't do that and have an effective team unless you've got a close team. Just talk about how close-knit y'all really are. Yeah, our, I would say some of my best friends are on this team in that just I can trust them with anything. And I could go to them with anything if I have a problem and I would feel comfortable talking to them. And I feel comfortable with someone else playing my spot or going to play someone else's spot. And I just trust that they're there. Well, great. And Sam, you know, you need that coaching staff as well. How much does Coach Hal and the, and the coaches mean to y'all? I mean, they – they are a huge vital part of our softball team. They encourage us. They also know when to um, just get serious and tell us how to improve and how to fix it quick. And um, they're just really important. They're also our friends. They also love to joke around. And I think that's very important for them to have the coaching, but also the friend um, aspect. That's very good. Well, coach, I mean, you've got a great group of young ladies here and you've got an even better group as a whole team. And the last group that came on and talked to us told us, you like showing videos of you playing football? So <laughs> I just want to confirm that. No, we don't. Okay. <laughs> no, that's not. <laughs> and they said they were going to get you to do a TikTok this year if y'all made the playoffs. So I just want to know when that was coming out. I can do some TikTok, I promise. Okay. You. I think some of our girls do TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Well, Coach, you know, talk about this group of young ladies that you got right here tonight and just, you know, the, it, they're not only just great athletes, they're great individuals as well. 
and how much they mean mean to you in the program. Well, like I said, we we've uh, to make a team, you have to put the puzzle together and put the best players in the best spots. And we we can uh, think about our team. We can interchange a lot of positions that we have on the field. Certain people can play infield. Certain people play outfield. And so, but this is the fastest group I've ever had. We've usually had big girls that could hit, but now we have little girls, but we're really fast. I think that's one of our strong points is we have a lot of speed. It's the most speed I've ever had. So uh, we can give people a lot of problems with, you know, put, playing the short game and, and putting the ball on the ground and also hitting and running and stealing bases. So I'm really proud of them, and they're a good good, good bunch of girls. They, they – uh, you know, they handle things well, They're uh, and they survive on each other. If something goes bad, somebody's going to pick the other one up. I'm proud of too. That's awesome, man. And, and Marley, how much do you like playing that high-speed small ball game? I love it. I, I love it. Like, that's all I can say. I just love being able to put a bunt down and just race down the base as fast as I can. Well, Molly, how great is it to see pe- people out there just – I mean, y'all pretty much have the green light to steal from what I've seen thus far. I mean, y'all are just taking bases and yes. trying to get that extra extra little ump, you know, on, yes. you know, turn a single into a double. Just talk about that kind of exciting ball right there. It's really exciting, especially in the dugout seeing your teammate. Like, you'll just, like, turn around for a second, then you'll look back on the field, and they're on the other – they're on the next base, and it's just really exciting. And it gets everyone pumped up and, like, it gets the next batter ready to do their job and it's just a chain reaction. Well, and Sam, and I know y'all have had some up and ups and downs, but y'all have had some rainouts and stuff. So it's not consistent play really, but y'all's bats have been pretty much alive all year long. And how does that make you feel about the upcoming playoffs and finishing out the season and trying to get that extra spot up there on the deal? I mean, that's a very part of, um, vital part of a team is to have um, a good lineup that has consistent batting. Um, whenever we're about to go play a game somewhere, we always look, can all nine of their hitters hit well and effectively? And um, whenever we do that, plus the speed, I mean, that's really going to help us out in the end. And we've got good fielders, and I feel like it's going to take us far in the playoffs no matter what. Well, Coach, Sam just mentioned that, which is good fielders. I think I saw where y'all are at- – almost at a a 789 fielding percentage for the year, which is pretty darn good. Uh, Just talk about that defensive – you know, the the way you are to handle pressure with your defense and get those outs. Well, my outfielders pretty much can run almost anything down in the outfield. They've got a lot of speed out there. Our infield are the same. We've got talented girls at, you know, the mid-infields and and third base, which – our catcher's really solid behind the plate, and our pitchers, they're working, and they, you know, they, our people can catch you when they do hit it. So I'm uh, proud of the girls, and uh, they're working, they, they continue to work hard. If we hustle and go after balls and do our very best, I'm satisfied with that. Well, one of the big things I've noticed when I've been able to come out and watch y'all is y'all are really pitching to contact and rely, you know, you, you have that faith in your gloves. I mean, how important is that that you've got those? seven people behind you that have that faith that, you know, I can pitch it in there because I know these seven people behind me are going to take care of it. Yeah, most of the time we can do that. You know, sometimes I just always tell them, I said, catch the ones we can. And, uh, you know, they're going to hit it sometime in the gaps. But the ones we can get to, most of the time we can run them down. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm proud of the girls is just, you know, we have errors sometimes. But, you know, as long as they're trying, making effort and, and trying their very best, in the long run, we'll be successful. Well, and Marley, we're going to start this. Is, ladies, is the same question to all three of y'all. But, Marley, we're going to go with you first, okay? How much is Coach Hal and this team this season, coming off of COVID and everything else that's been going on, meant to you? I think last year with COVID, that was a big setback for everyone. It kind of threw everyone's <coughs> game off a little bit. And having to come back for a second round – or, like, even for the freshmen, like, having to come back and know that you kind of have to set a reputation again, like, get yourself back up there, and you have to work twice as hard to get back where you were because of that huge setback that we had. Um, and I think we really have worked really hard, and I feel like 
all those, even just the small little achievements that we get when we get three up, three down in an inning or compared to the big victories that we have, like it just feels so good and it builds up so much confidence and it helps us keep pushing for the next game to get to playoff, to be successful in playoffs. So I think it just really helps <coughs> and it makes us stronger as a team because when you play with all these people and you learn to trust each other and you learn to work hard together, it helps build that family friendship bond. And I think we have a strong bond, whether it's between a teammate and a teammate or the coaches or even parents, like it just builds everyone together and it builds that, like that bond. Gotcha. Well, Molly, what about you? Um, I think COVID and just seeing how hard everyone has worked and seeing their accomplishments over the time and coming back, it, it was hard at first, but just over time, we got it back, and we've been um, doing very well. Okay. Sam? Um, I mean, when COVID hit, that was just devastating to our season before. And um, whenever we came back for school, I mean, we had to start from the very bottom. We had to build a whole new lineup because we lost um, some players. And um, I just feel like – the way that we've connected and come back is this is far this is by far one of the best teams that I've been on as a junior um, in the past like three years and uh, coming back from such a setback is really it kind of tests your relationship with your teammates and I feel like we have a great relationship as a team that's awesome well coach Al one of the things that I don't think a lot of people have thought about this year was your senior class this year, you got three seniors, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, y'all are going to be honoring them on Friday night. But yes. the big thing to me was is the last time those ladies took the field, they were sophomores. You know, you for everybody forgets, you lost that year to learn how to become that leader on the team, that, that upperclassman. And it seems like your seniors have done an excellent job of that this year. And can you just talk about the – maturization of these young ladies with that having that miss there well i tell you that the biggest thing about my seniors uh some of them don't start but as far as being a team player on the bench supporting everybody else uh they're really they did they have done an outstanding job and you can hear it from the other girls they're they they're the loudest cheers in the dugout and uh they're they've kept a lot of things together in the dugout that, you know, which, you know, different leadership qualities, different things, but they're, they just, uh, my three seniors, I'm proud of them. You know, they don't play as much as they probably could or want to, but, but they're on, on the bench and, and cheering another teammates on has been a big inspiration for me as, as, as a senior group. That's been, that's phenomenal coach. And, uh, folks, just so you know, ladies got a few more games out there. Definitely make it out Friday for senior night. We want to make sure we get that place rocking. And also, by that time, we ought to know if these ladies have moved up that extra little spot to get make that run in the playoffs. Coach Al, ladies, thank you all so much for joining us. We wish you all the best. Hit them where they ain't, and we'll see you all on down the road, okay? Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. In Ellis County, there's only one place to go. Go City Pizza and Burger. But don't worry, they got you also covered on ice cream as well. All kinds of flavors made in-house, just specially for you. And toppings to boot, as many as you like. So count your blessings for Doe City Pizza and Burgers and those big old scoops the size of Texas. Made just the way you want. So head on down to Doe City where the service and food are both delicious. Doe City Pizza and Burgers located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from the high school. Come on down and try them. Take your way, Hoss. All right, we want to welcome in the Middle Lothian Lady Panthers softball team. We've got Hailey Hoggett. Uh, we have got 
Hannah King, we've got Riley Crawford and Bailey Hughes joining us. We appreciate everybody taking time out of their day to come and talk to us. It does mean a lot, and uh, we thank y'all so very much. And so, uh, Kylie, you were the first one on. I'm going to start with you. You guys are currently sitting third in district, still a successful season, 15-6-1, 7-3 overall. So that just shows the strength of the district. But overall, what is your thought of how – this season's going so far. And as you still got a game to go against Joshua, uh, how do y'all feel headed into the playoffs? Um, well, this season has been uh, definitely a learning experience because of all the new rules that were put in place. Um, I would say that we've kind of found our groove at, um, in working together as a team. And we've really kind of figured out a way for all of us to communicate a lot better and um, just – like I said, have that teamwork atmosphere where we all just um, work together and do our jobs as a team. Um, going into playoffs, I know we're all super excited for the experience, and um, we're all hoping that we do really well, and we're working hard in practice to make sure that um, we do what we need to do. Well, Bailey, I'm going to stop on the playoff talk for a second. I'm going to go back to Saturday, <laughs> possibly the last home game. And Bailey, I don't know if you know this, but Bailey cranks one over the left field fence. How did that feel, leaving that mark in your last last possible home game? It feels really good, especially against probably one of the better pitchers that we've seen in a while. She was definitely a step up from what we've seen, uh, both speed and movement-wise. But it does feel really good to kind of – leave that last staple before I go on and everything. Phenomenal. Well, Hannah, I got to ask, because it seems like out of everybody we've got in here, all of y'all can swing the bat. And y'all hit it a long way, too. Is it something you got there over in the water at Middle Othian? Or, or what is Coach Lazoya doing? What's, what, what's the approach that y'all are dropping bombs, man? It's, it's good over there at MHS. I mean, we just like to work really hard. I mean, we work every pitch what we're gonna see uh slow fast movement um off a machine or front toss i mean we try to do everything to prepare ourselves before before our games no no launch angle talk right <laughs> no not really it's just ourselves <laughs> well and raleigh you know everybody talks about the bombs over there but one thing i think that gets missed a lot is all four of y'all great contact hitters as well there's a lot of doubles. There's a lot of moving people around. Just talk to about how being that, that intense and in a bat and finding that pitch that is a missed pitch and driving it somewhere really helps your team out. Yeah, I would say, I would say that um, we're more just put the ball in play. If we do hit a home run, we do. It's just we want, we want to move that next runner because if we move the next runner, then it creates more plays. It creates more pressure on the opposite team. And that, I believe that just, it puts, as I just said, it puts more pressure. And once you create more pressure, you create more opportunities. Well, and Kyle, you're going to have to correct me if I'm wrong here. Okay. But I've always joked that coach Lazoya did not have a bunt sign, but I actually saw you bunt this year. Okay, yeah. how, how good did it feel to, to, to lay one down? Um, bunting is always something that's um, super important. So, like Hannah said, we work on pretty much everything at practice. So, um, it's really nice to know that all that hard work that we've put in on bunting has paid off. Very good. Now, Bailey, you're the catcher, correct? Yes, sir. So, I, I want to know, when you're sitting there and you're, you're pretty much the captain on defense, you see everything. All right. Talk about being out there playing. You got Kylie at first. You got Hannah on the mound. Riley out at second base. Knowing, having confidence that you, you when you're calling pitches that your defense is going to work. Talk about your, your chemistry and, and being able to have confidence and play behind Hannah who pitches that you trust that defense can get stuff done. Well, as far as me and Hannah go, I've been catching her since probably sixth grade. So I know her pitch is like the back of my hand. And I've been able to figure out what works good for her and what doesn't. Uh, as far as defense, I've also been playing with Kylie and Marilyn in the outfield for a long time. And so I'm, I'm used to playing with them. 
uh, as far as some of the newer girls, like the freshmen, sophomores, we've molded together really well. We've gotten a good system. I feel like we have a really good starting uh, defense and everyone's just kind of gotten better at working together, knowing what to do when, and just taking it play by play. Now, Hannah, uh, Bailey kind of mentioned it. So I'm going to ask you when you, when you've been with somebody, someone that's caught you since, since what'd you say? Six years old, something like that. Talk Three, about sixth grade. Yes. Sixth grade. Talk about how the connection is. It, there's a total difference when you're comfortable with somebody behind the plate or you're, you have somebody catching you that you don't really know. Talk about that connection and then just how much of a weight it takes off your shoulders when you're in the circle. I mean, I've definitely had some of those catchers where I don't feel comfortable throwing certain stuff. I can't um, – not necessarily that I can't trust them, but I won't – trust myself to do what I need to do just because it's not in my nature. So having somebody like Bailey there who I've known for such a long time really helps me um, narrow down my focus and knowing that I can do what I need to do and that she'll be there to back me up if I make a mistake. Well, and Raleigh, you know, one of the things that we haven't talked about yet is flashing that leather, you know, and y'all done a great job of it. You almost turned a couple of double plays this last weekend when we were watching just talk about the communication that's going on between, you know, Merck, Kitchens, you know, and y'all and you two on the screen with us that to make that defense really fire on all cylinders in the infield. Well, we practice it a lot. Um, we try to practice a lot. I'll say that whenever we have game scenarios in practice, we, we strive to do that. So it kind of comes natural whenever it comes to the game. And if we don't execute it, I think we come back. We're like, all right, this is what we need to do better or um, this is like what could have gone better, or we just look at it like, hey, that was a great play. They just executed it a little better than we did. Makes it easy when you got to pick a machine like Kylie over there at first base, right? <laughs> a lot easier. <laughs> so, well, I want to I wanna ask, and Kylie, we'll come to you. Um, we've talked before about, about the COVID and missing last year, but you guys are playoff bound. Um, whether whatever seed that is, still undetermined, but you're going. Talk about what it means to be back in the playoffs, get this full season, and now you get to go fight for a state title for MHS. Well, um, especially with last year, you know, missing out on that. My freshman year, honestly, playoffs was so much fun. I enjoyed that experience with the whole team. So to get back to that is really exciting. I'm excited to experience it with the sophomores who didn't get to last year and the freshmen this year. Um, we honestly, we have a great group of girls and it's always fun no matter what we're doing, team dinners or um, just even practices. It's always a fun time. So um, that's really exciting. Well, and Bailey, you know, we talk about y'all's team bond, but you have a bond with the youth players there in Middle Oath as well. Y'all just hosted them for Futures Day. And how great was that to have them out there and, you know, take positions with you for the national anthem and then do autographs out in the outfield and just see how much, support and love that y'all get from the mentorship that y'all give these young ladies. And seeing all those kids, seeing how many showed up was just phenomenal. And you could see how excited they were, how much energy all the kids had. And it was just really nice knowing that we have so many people backing us up, even if they don't go to the games, we still have that unsaid support and just that admiration that the girls had for us. Like it was, it was really humbling getting to see like so many younger players seem to be as good as high school players and everything. Well, and Bailey, I want you to chime in on this too, but the question is going to go to Hannah. Hannah, you just, you, you've looked great all year, but the last two games when you've taken that circle and towed that rubber, you've looked totally different. Is there just something going on between you and Bailey where y'all got the pitch sequence down, you know, you're just hitting your marks. I mean, it, it and that changeup is deadly right now, okay? That thing is nasty because you struck out four D1 prospects with it this last weekend. So just talk about, you know, what's working for you and what, that, what the deal is with all this extra oomph getting into the playoff run. You know, that changeup has always been one of my really go-to pitches. I've always trusted it ever since I was younger. I've had a lot of confidence in it. That's something I know I can always go to, and Bailey knows that too. So 
you know, even when we have a little circle time, we have to pull them together, you know, we'll talk about what we need to throw and um, where we can go at these girls. Well, Bailey, I got one question going to that, though, which is, is Coach White making y'all those famous chicken parms to get this kind of pitching out of her? Or, or do we need to have some of those for the playoffs? If he has made any for him, I haven't known about it. But okay. I personally haven't gotten the chicken parm. I had a meatball sub a while back, but okay. I haven't had the chicken parm yet. <laughs> well, Riley, coming down to you, you talked about the team chemistry, this group, and, and how close you are. But one thing that is important, too, is the trust, the belief, and the chemistry you have with your coach. Coach Lazori, talk about what he's meant to you, um, meant to the team, and how he has you guys prepared for the playoffs. There is no type of bond. There is no way that I can explain the type of bond that we have with Coach Zoya as a team and just as an individual. Um, he's he's always been there for us. Uh, he's been there for me ever since I showed up as a sophomore. Um, but the trust that everyone bestows upon him is insane. Um, we all we all know he's going to be there for us. Uh, we all know that he trusts us. He believes in us and he's just going to be there for us. So we all, we all know that he, he believes in us and that gives us a little more, what's the word? Um, confidence. Yeah. Confidence. Thank you. Uh, it gives us a little more confidence in ourselves. That's good teammates right there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. All right. So, we didn't have this old group on. We asked Bailey this, okay, the first time she was able to come on with us. But, Kylie, I'm going to ask you, on these bus trips, who's got the speaker? Who's getting everybody to do TikToks? <laughs> who's, that, who's that wild woman in the back getting everybody fired up? I would definitely say the big TikTok people are Carson Kitchens, Farinade, and Jessica Merck. Okay. Uh, one with the speaker is usually Erica, and the one that's controlling the music is usually uh, Farron. But Macy Cassell has kind of stepped up too lately with some there we go. nice tunes. Now, has Coach Lazoya made a TikTok appearance yet? Not yet. We are still working on it. So maybe, oh. maybe that playoff. We need a playoff TikTok, ladies. There you go. That's, okay, we're that's on mostly it. most definite. We're on it. Oh. And y'all still have Joshua uh, at Joshua, if I'm not mistaken, on Friday night, correct? Uh, I think we're getting it changed to Thursday. Thursday night. Thursday? Move it okay. up. Well, awesome, awesome. Well, if you had to give a, a speech, and I'm going to call you out, and I don't mean to, but if you had to give a speech to say, hey, you want to see some, some girls kick some butt, come out Thursday, watch MHS softball, what, what would your pump-up speech be? Um... I think we've worked really hard this season. I mean, we've come back from a lot, and I think we're ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe again and see what we can put up against these Joshua girls. Well, I see where Joshua got y'all the first time. I'm, I have a feeling it's going to be a totally different occasion come Thursday, and we, we are definitely rooting for y'all. So uh, I, I, I want to see it. I know he does too, but I want to see it. So, you got anything? No, man. I'll tell you what, ladies. Appreciate y'all coming on. Uh, hit them where they ain't. All right? And uh, that's over the fence, if you don't know that. <laughs> they ain't back there. You know, just find the tennis court at any local school and hit it out there. Uh, but, no, great season thus far. I can't wait to see how far y'all go in the playoffs and wish y'all all the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Are you hungry for the best burgers, fries, and pizza in Ellis County? Well, stop by Doe City Pizza and Burgers, where the ingredients are fresh every day and stacked up just the way you like. Custom seasoned fries and burgers right off the grill on in-house fresh homemade buns. So head on down to Doe City Pizza and Burgers where everything there is delicious. Doe City Beats and Burgers is located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from Red Oak High School. Make sure you come down and have the best burgers and service in Ellis County.
with the Inherited Golf. We got Coach Bennett. We got Brimley Caldwell. We got Carter Dawson. We got Jennery Conrad and Luke Houshin. And Coach, y'all are headed off to regionals. Just how proud of you of this group this year? So proud of them. It's been so much fun to, to get, you know, get through the COVID things and, and uh, start to get on the other side of it and see see normalcy and golf tournaments and uh, – um, just, just been hard working. A lot of them, they've had to do a lot of things on their own. Some of these kids have been virtual kids. Um, and, you know, just trying to balance school and, and being able to get out to the golf courses and, you know, just, you know, resilient. Had to be resilient in everything that we've done. And uh, been a good group. We won, two, won both district championships, boys and girls. Uh, we lined up with, with the boys. Um, uh, tomorrow and Tuesday, and then the girls Wednesday and Thursday, and we're going to try to go win a uh, regional championship for both of them. Well, in Trinity, you know, last year you didn't get to you didn't get to play golf, and y'all already mm -hmm. made it to regionals last year, the year before that. So it's going to be regionals, COVID regionals. But how does it feel to be back at this and being playing at such a high level? It feels great. Like I'm honestly super proud of the girls also that came in that are freshmen and then we have one sophomore because just the fact that we have made it this far with such new players is it's just amazing well and carter you know being being a freshman first year and you're going to regionals this year and i i, I feel like personally i know coach won't say this but probably i, I feel like y'all got a great chance to keep advancing how does it feel to be in that kind of position as a freshman this year Oh, it, I, I'm I'm really happy with it, and you know I'm still learning the ropes. It's my first time doing this. It's it's all new to me, and so I'm just excited to get to this high level my first year. Well, and Brindley, we talked about scores a while ago, and you know that's a pretty darn good score for a young lady that's one year in on this thing. You know what is what has helped evolve your your game thus far? Um. Definitely, like, practice and, like, keeping calm in, like, hard situations and Coach Bennett for sure. <laughs> okay. And, Luke, let me ask you, man, what's your favorite thing to pull out of the bag? Mr. Three Wiggle, are we going to pull the driver out? Are we Are going to go three wood? Recently, it's been driver. I've been hitting my driver pretty good. But my go-to iron during the tournament, well, I mean, obviously, it's depending on distance, but – I like to hit my five iron. Well, nice. Man, he's bombing that driver on good. out there these days. He's a sophomore now, and he's he's getting that link. I told him the other day. I said, "Man, you really you're hitting it really good now, and it's really going to come along for his game." He's 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 hitting it out there pretty good. Well, coach, you know, a lot of people we're going to talk about soccer. You know, they just won their state championship this last week. Football team's been perennial. Pretty much everything in Heritage has been great, and a lot of people overlook golf. And y'all have had an exceptional run with golf there at Heritage. Just talk about the kind of kids that you've had and the ones that you have right now and that mindset of becoming a champion. Well, you know, we start with building a program and being a team. You know, it, golf looks at, gets looked at most, most places as individuals. And what I pride myself is as a program, it's about a team. And these guys would all tell you that that's what it's about for me. It's about the team. It's about us us doing well as, as a team. And and the Heritage Legacy has been awesome, you know, coming over there. I, I've been over there since we opened it. Uh, I'm also the assistant athletic coordinator with Coach Williginton. So, you know, we, we strive to get in that Long Star Cup. We want we want to win. And, and golf is really, really hard because you have to be in the top five in the state tournament to get any points for our Long Star Cup. So, um, you know, it's, 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 it's hard. It's hard for us as golf to, to – uh, um, you know, contribute on that Long Star Cup because of the way they have the UIO has it set up. But um, it's just great, great pride. You know, great pride in that Heritage logo and and walking around with the Jaguars, you know, on, on our bag and everything. And and it's contagious. And that, and that's the biggest thing too with with COVID. I I think is coming out and us being able to support each other again and like. You know, like that soccer deal you're talking about a couple of days ago, Coach Slovacek and the girls winning a state championship, and we took buses down there, and, and the kids getting to get back that, uh, you know, that pride, that pride, that heritage pride, and so it's been tremendous. It's been a tremendous experience, and and uh, 
I think, you know, golf has held their own. We've held our own as far as our, our yeah. things in the school. And, and uh, they really do do a great job. Miss Tipton just texted me a while ago and just said, you know, good luck tomorrow at regionals. And so from Miss Tipton to, you know, to Coach Williamson and uh, everybody recognizes us. I know that that probably is the case lots of places with golf, but I would say it's not at Heritage High School. We want, we want to win in every single thing that there is. And so, so we take great pride in that. Well, and Trinity, being, being the Elder States woman here, being a junior, you know, one of the things about golf is, you know, you don't have a cheering section around you. You know, it's a mm -hmm. lot more internal. So how do you build that mindset to keep going on that course? Like, you may have a bad shot here or there. How do you pull yourself out of that? Well, I try to think about the fact that, yes, that may have been a bad shot, but it's over with now, and I – just count to 10 and I, and I move on because I can't do anything about that past shot. And it golf is a big mental game. And in order for me to not continue to hit bad shots after I do mess up, I have to just take a breather and make sure that I get back on track because every shot for the team is going to help us improve. And I can't just to get into just a bad mindset and per, like maybe mess up the team score. Okay. And Carter, you know, like I said before, you're not out there together, but I know when y'all get back to the clubhouse and you're checking scores and stuff, y'all are together. How good is it to have, you know, that upperclassman leadership out there kind of showing you the way to, to take things and the way to look positive on things? Oh, it's, it's nice to have, you know, people above me that can, like they've been where I'm at and they, they know like how, like what I'm going through so they can kind of show me like how to deal with it. And just that they've been a big help. Awesome. And Brinley back to you real quick, you know, just talk about, you know, before the, before you hit the links, right. There's that little bit of time of warm up. Do y'all just kind of go over a couple of things and kind of watch each other's putts and see how everybody's doing on chipping, et cetera. Yeah, we hit a few balls with, like, each club, and then we putt, and we all just putt together, and, like, it calms my nerves, at least, before, like, the tournament, like, just, like, as a team putting, and, yeah. Nice. Well, Luke, are you there, Luke? There we go. Here yeah, we go. I'm here. Had to get the Nike cap on. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, Luke, to back to you real quick, you know, what's one of the things as a sophomore, you know, you, you've been been there for a season, but it was a COVID year. How much difference is it now? I mean, you got some practice in last year with the team at the first of the season, but then it kind of ends. Mm -hmm. How was that transition having that basic year off for you? Well, I, I mean, I tried to play golf as much as I could whenever – we had all that COVID going around, but uh, ever since the season started back up, I've been able to practice a lot more. And I, I mean, most of the practicing I do is with the team because we practice four days a week and then have a tournament on the weekend sometimes. But my game's improved a lot this year from last year. Very nice. Very nice. Well, Coach, we're going to skip you for a second, but I'm going <laughs> to ask all four of y'all the exact same question. And uh, we'll go ladies first. Brindley, we'll go back up to you. You know, what has Coach Bennett meant to you over this season? Um, he's meant a lot of things. He's been so supportive and helpful and encouraging. And just, like, if I'm in, like, a bad mindset after a bad hole, he can always, like, bring me up and get me, like, positive again for the next hole and helps me, like, forget about it. And he's been really great. Awesome. And Carter? Uh, he's been really good, especially, you know, after a bad hole and you're thinking, wow, this just isn't going too well. You know, he's always there. kind of reminds you, you know, like there's – the next hole is always there. It's, it's, not, it's not over yet. Gotcha. What about you, Luke? Uh, Coach Bennett's great. Um, I like that he's been able to get us into a lot of the tournaments and – I mean, like everyone else said, after a few bad holes, it's good to see him. 
and he'll he'll put you in a better mood and tell you that everything's all right and then help you help you with your next shot. Very good. Now, Trinity, you've had him longest. What has Coach Bennett meant to you during your career there at Heritage? Oh, he's just been incredibly uh, supportive on everything, like whether it's uh, – supporting us to improve our scores or encouraging us to play in more tournaments so that we can get better as a team. Just, I mean, he was coaching me a little bit in eighth grade too. And like, he's part of the reason why I'm still wanting to continue to grow my score. Like it's just, it's amazing how many tournaments he's put us in that we've been able to play more competitive schools that, make going into regionals and state that much easier because we've been able to play against uh, five and six A schools that we wouldn't be able to normally play with. Well, and coach, you know, we know about the athletic prowess of all four of these young people here. Just talk about them on a personal note. You know, what I think what gets lost in athletics sometimes is what great students are they are, what givers to the community they are and stuff like that. Can you just speak to these four about these four about that? Uh, the, the grades of these four right here are really good, really, really good. You know, and, and the biggest thing we talk about every time before we get off the bus, lots of time, you know, I'll tell them, you know, I want you to be the best at everything that you do, okay? And then and the way you carry yourself and, the, and, and your etiquette and your uh, – just your, your attitude and your, uh, your sportsmanship and everything else. And then at the end of the day, I'd like for you to play well too. So – I think that uh, they, these guys all fall right into that Jaguar deal that we've had and, and uh, continue to have and continue to grow it, and then they, they lead to the next one and so forth because uh, there's going to be some coming up looking, looking up to them soon, you know, uh, the two freshmen and sophomores. You know, this is, this is all new to them, you know, varsity-wise varsity and uh, UIO-wise. We've had district. You know, we won both of those, and – you know, my girls won by 200 and something shots. So, I mean, that's – that they, <laughs> we went one, two, three, four, five in district. So, we, we kind of had our own internal competition. And then on the boys' side, well, um, Life Walks Hatchie was a lot better this year. So, we had a little bit of a experience there. Uh, but th- this these next two days are going to be a tremendous experience for them. But, you know, and Trinity's a junior now, and, and uh, I don't have any seniors. So, she is an upperclassman, and, and they're all looking up looking up to her and uh, just their work ethic and things that they do away from there. Um, so it, it just, you know, I'm blessed that it just, it's just contagious and it goes from one to the next, you know, from, from and then we've got a group of eighth graders that are started up to this year. They lost COVID last year. So we got seventh and eighth graders that will be looking up to them and be joining us in the next two years. So uh, we just, just try to keep it going. Well, folks, Thank you all so much for joining us. And folks out there in Ellis County, don't forget, these golf players spend countless hours hitting balls, putting, just trying to look at courses. Make sure that you give them the support around the county that they deserve because they're athletes just like everybody else. And (coughs) ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep our eyes on you because we know that y'all have the ability to take it all the way to state and represent Ellis County in the right way. Congratulations on all the success so far. And we can't look for nothing but more from y'all in the Heritage Jaguar golf team. Thank you, Tater. We see the future in her. And as she grows, bonds are bigger. Lessons are learned. We plan for her future with those we trust. So when the day comes, and she's ready to soar. She'll do it knowing there's always someone there. Pinnacle Bank, not just a bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. Welcome in, Middle Lothian Heritage Softball. We've got Coach Spradley. We've got Zoe Isom, Taylor Mullen, Ashlyn Franks, and Lacey Harrison joining us. We appreciate y'all so much. 
taking time out of your evenings. I'm going to have to say, Zoe, I hope you're really careful right now because you're way more talented than I am. Um, but thank you all so much. Do what? I'm being very careful. All right. She's actually driving. I could see that. To, um, yeah. Coach Bradley's like, we got to play in a week or so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, nah, but could we thank y'all so much for jumping on with us. Coach Bradley, coming to you, talk about a a good season. I mean, take the record book out of it. You played some tough teams in tournaments early in the year, but you guys are second place in district. It seems like you've got these girls rolling. Talk about how you feel the season's gone and then how you feel going into playoffs that will start within the next week or so. Well, obviously, we would like our record to be better. I mean, there were some games that could have gone either way and, and some that we won, some that we, you know, we were ahead of and then, you know, lost the lead late, especially with Kennedale. But, you know, like I told the girls today, it's zero and zero now, and it doesn't matter. Your stats don't matter. Your records don't matter. Uh, you're in the playoffs. It's a tournament, and, uh, you know, it's about being hot at the right time, and hopefully we're going to work on the things that, know we need to continue to work on and and when we do get a chance to play our bi-district matchup we're ready to go and, and and ready to advance well taylor you know coming in on the team this year and everything talk about the excitement for you you know being a freshman and then jumping right into the playoffs first year it's got to be amazing um yeah it really is amazing like to think about it. it's really exciting especially being a freshman and I don't know, like, the whole experience has been really great. Sweet. Ashlyn, kind of the same question to you as a freshman. Uh, you get to play with, with some girls who have set some pretty high mi high milestones, and Zoe and Elizabeth Smith coming in and joining this team. How has it been to play under girls like that and then come together, even though you are a freshman and feeling like you are a part of the team and now getting to go and play in the playoffs? Yeah, it's been a great experience, and I love that I got the opportunity to play up and play under the girls that have set great role models for us, and it's been a great experience ha getting to play up and having the better pitchers and the better teams, and just, like, everyone around you just makes you want to be so much better and, like, working up. It's been – it's awesome. I love it. Well, Lacey, just talk about the culture that Coach Bradley's built over there and the ladies <laughs> before y'all, you know, that, that tight-knit culture. We're all in this together. We had that connection last year, and so I feel like that brought us even closer with him being the same coach as last year. And then with everybody from last year and then having the freshmen come in, we just built them more into our culture. Nice. Well, Zoe – as someone who's been there and you've dominated for four years now, uh, talk about when you are seeing the younger girls up on the team and building a chemistry and helping set a foundation for the future, what it's like to be that senior role model and that senior leader that these girls might look to. Yeah, so I definitely, like, just watching them grow from, like, day one of tryouts to now, um, JV team through varsity team, freshmen through juniors, like watching them grow and seeing that, like, I'm going to leave this program, hopefully not soon, but at the end of the year. And I like, it's nice to see, like, what they've grown and what they've became and everything that they're doing with the program already. So whenever I leave and Joe leaves and Elizabeth leaves, we know that our program's still in good hands. The foundation that we've set since our freshman year is still in good hands with the people who are underneath us. Well, Coach Bradley, it's got to feel pretty good that when you have senior leaders like you do, girls that not only thrive in this sport, thrive in other sports, but more important, they thrive off the field as well. How does it make you feel when you've got these young ladies? You've got two freshmen and a sophomore here with Zoe that this is the future, and you get to kind of integrate that with your senior leaders and setting the way moving forward. I think the big thing is just – you know, especially with softball, just seeing, you know, with experience, you just gain a, a softball IQ and just understand uh, situations much better because you've been in those situations. And that's why experience is so important. And that's, you know, Liz and, and, and Zoe and Joe, they, they've been there. And so the game slows down for them just because they've seen it. 
And I think the young girls see that. And, and that's what we talk about is, you know, you may make a mistake, but then the next time you, you got to learn from that mistake and, and that just builds your IQ builds by playing the game. And, you know, those, those seniors have just been great uh, at setting that bar high. Uh, they're all, we talked about it today. They're all three great players. And, you know, our program wouldn't be the same without them. I know that. Well, and Ashlyn, you know, let's, let's go to you real quick. This, this Friday, if I, Coach, correct me if I'm wrong, okay, but isn't it Friday you are having a Futures Night? Yes, we're going to have a, the uh, Youth League. If, if they wear their jersey, they're going to get to get in the game for free and then come meet the team and watch the game. So, yes. Well, Ashlyn, how excited are you to see these young ladies come out and be at the ballpark and be a mentor to them and show them the heritage way to play softball? I think it's so awesome for them. I've been playing since I was six years old. And I mean, I can just think of watching college games or anything, or even just watching high school games. It's so cool to think that, you know, you might be able to be in that position one day and to think that I'm in the position to where I'm having younger kids look up to me and be and want to be where I am or be better than me. I mean, it's, it's awesome. I love it. I think that me being able to be a mentor or the whole team being able to have these kids look up to them is just awesome. Well, and Taylor, I'm going to hit you up, okay? Put you on the spot a little bit. One of the best things about softball is those chants coming from the dugout. Can you give us a quick chant for Heritage? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm – I don't – we don't really do the chants, but, I mean, I'm one of, like, the loudest ones in the dugout most of the yeah. time. And a lot of the times I'm always cheering on every girl on the team and, you know, encouraging everyone. So I don't think there's necessarily, like, one chant I can go ahead and do. But, okay. I mean, there's always encouragement there. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll switch it up for you then, okay? Since I know you got the voice, <laughs> get some people fired up about why they ought to be out there Friday – Okay, and why they ought to be out there watching y'all on this playoff run. Let's hear that fire up speech. I mean, I really think people should come and watch us. And like what Ashlyn said about having these little girls come and watch us, I think that's so amazing. And I really think people should be there for this game. Well, Seth, I think she's holding back on us a little bit. She's definitely <laughs> holding back. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I want to ask, uh, go over to coach real quick. Because uh, I want to, I've never coached softball. Uh, how, like when, when all the chants and the yelling are going on, do you just get used to it? Do you have to turn around and say, "Hey, let's simmer down a little bit"? Because I played baseball. Oh, usually I'm doing the totally opposite. Different. Well, <laughs> we've got a we've got a, a mix of, of people on the team. We've got a lot of introverted people. That's why you know when I ask them to do this interview on Zoom, it's like they just clam up and and they get scared. And so uh, you know, a lot of times I got to try to get them to to talk and and to be loud, just because we have a lot of quiet players on the team. Uh, but like Taylor, she's always talking. She's always encouraging. So I actually like it. I mean, I, it's 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 fun for me. I think it's a it, it, I, that's what I enjoy about it. It's just the energy. Nice. Well, Lacey, we'll get back to softball actually on the field. Talk about when you're out there on defense and you're getting to play behind someone like Zoe who's in the circle. How much confidence does he give you guys knowing that who you're running out there is one going to fill up the zone, two give you everything you got but but is going to fight as much for you as, as you will go fight for her. I feel like with Zoe in the pitcher, on the pitcher's mound, I feel like all of us just want to do the best that we can, knowing that it's her senior year. And for her to pull, put out her all, it makes all of us want to put our hearts on the line too. <laughs> and, and Zoe, kind of same on the flip side of that to you, when, when you're out there towing the rubber, I mean, you've, you've got Elizabeth Schmidt back there. I know y'all have got an incredible connection. But how much easier does it make it for you when you've got a defense behind you that you can trust? You've got girls behind you that will go get the ball. Make it easier to fill up the zone, to, 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 to not worry about nitpicking so much and just kind of that relief that you can do what you do knowing that your defense has your back. Yeah, most definitely. You know, umpires aren't perfect and umpires – I think all umpires just know who I am at this point and they – they just want to squeeze the zone for me, so make it a little tricky on me. <laughs> make it a little tricky to get those strikeouts that I want. But I think it's – I do get – if I get deep into account, I have 
all the faith to put it there and let them hit it and let my defense have my back and just let them work behind me because I know, you know, nobody's perfect. Everyone's going to make errors. It happens. It's a part of the game. But when we could just as long as we don't let one error turn into 20, we're good. And they don't let that happen. They flush it. We have a three-second rule. You make an error, you have three seconds, you flush it. We actually had a toilet seat that we carried around. And if you made an error, you flushed it from the toilet seat from the toilet seat to awesome. keep us on our game page, on our game. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I've got to say, I don't know what umpires you've got. I've always heard they've got 2020 vision. I, I, I'm not sure which umpires y'all are getting. No, they've got about mm, – no. No. They got whatever the opposite of 2020. Hey, we, want to we want some calls in the playoffs. I'm just – I'm just. Yeah, umpires are great. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, I will say that uh, I'm not condoning. Don't ever use this in the game. Coach would get mad. But my favorite line that I've ever heard, heard a coach throw at an umpire, he was terrible behind the plate, and he told him to flip the plate over and read the directions. That was the, that was the best one I've ever had. If you want to use it, I'm not one. condoning it, but if you, it, I'm giving it to you. <laughs> okay, I've never Coach, used it. I'm sorry, man. No, but uh, let's let's get in a little bit deeper with this team this year. What's something that most people wouldn't know about this team? I mean, we know the record, we know the numbers that Zoe's been putting up. She's she's setting a new school record every time she toes the rubber. But you know. Schmidt's been hitting the ball like crazy. We know all that stuff, but what's the one thing that most people wouldn't know that you're most proud of? I think I'm just proud of, uh, you know, the younger girls and their work ethic. Uh, you know, they had to step into some big spots and, uh, you know, just continuing to, to press forward, even though there's been some adversity and continue to work, you know, whether it be bunting or, and you know, we talked today about two strike hitting, just putting the ball in play making defenses have to, to work uh, to get out. And so just uh, – they've come every day with a great attitude, and the young ones are – like we said, we're, they're, they're learning from the old ones. And I think this little freshman group, to be honest, they just bring a good vibe. They bring great energy, and that's what I've been very proud of is this – I think there were 12 or 13 that came out this year, and, you know, it's just – it's fun to coach them because they truly love the game. Well, and Lacey, on the reverse side of that, what's one thing that y'all all know about Coach Bradley that the world needs to know? <laughs> I feel like Coach Bradley, sometimes he could give off maybe a bad vibe to, like, other people in the stands. But then whenever you really get to, like, know him, he is the sweetest coach I have ever met in my life. Man. He really is. He, he – he will stay up until 3 a.m. One day he stayed up until 3 a.m. and posted our film. <laughs> and the next day we were all like, why were you up? <laughs> so he That's just – pretty awesome. He I, get, I get a little intense at times. So, but He's not hey, we all do. I'm, I'm pretty competitive. No. He's not good at dancing. What would you say? What? He's not good at dancing. Oh, I can dance. Oh, at dancing. I can, so, I can, Zoe, we yeah, need I the TikTok dance. <laughs> there we go. We need the playoff TikTok, ladies. We need hey, to get him out there. I'm in on that. Well, Zoe, let's hey, if, to if you. we win, a, if we win a first round playoff game, I will personally do a, a TikTok. They can film it. We got it. We got it on tape, ladies. That's right. I mean, so y'all get to design the dance the whole nine yards. Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So, Zoe. Give us your, since you've been there the longest, give us your Coach Spradley moment that uh, you'll always remember. This is scary. Oh, I'm going to have to think about that one. For... <laughs> she loves my joke of the day. She does. Love oh, that. my gosh. Okay, so Coach Bradley is a government teacher. So I had him in government, and his joke of the days were just horrible like i don't know where i don't know if he got them off of like badjokes.com or what but they just weren't very good but i guess like my favorite memory or no that one's a, that's a hard question mm. well we can let you think about it well yeah. taylor what are you going to take away from this year that you didn't think you were going to take away as a player and as a person for men on this team um 
really being on this team has helped me realize like a lot of things and realize how important it is to be really close uh, to a team or to really anybody you're like going to be playing with. Um, Cause I think as a team we're we have a really strong build together and I think that's really great. So I think taking that out of this year um, has just been like a, a great experience and something I really didn't think like would happen. So nice. Now, Ashlyn, uh, we're going to ask, and we might already know the answer, but uh, you're getting ready for a playoff run. Let's see. You get going deeper in the playoffs. You're going to have some nice bus rides. Who's the one on the team that's getting everybody crunk, playing the speaker, doing TikToks of coach? Who's getting everybody fired up on the bus? Um... <laughs> it might be her, the way she's <laughs> him and Holland. <laughs> They want to ask Lacey. It's probably bus, Lacey. She's the loudest one on the bus. She is. <laughs> um, probably it's going to be like either Lacey and Kylie, or Bryn. Bryn just has a mouth, and it is just constant. But we love her for it. That's who she is. That's her personality. And just you never know what is going to come out of her mouth. Well, and Zoe, did you come up with an answer yet? But I've got, I've got one thing for you, okay? You may say Coach Bradley can't dance, but at least you don't have Coach Blackwell singing on the bus rides. Well, in the weight room, he does sing. So, but I guess we, we always you – coach, you sing in the weight room. Oh, yeah. um, we always catch Coach Bradley. He does his, his, like, his nervous, like, walk, and, like, he never stands still. And – and Coach Bradley, well, he's not really gifted with a lot of height. We all know that. But when those little legs get to moving, it is – there's no stopping. And he's getting from the field to the field house or wherever he's going. And then he, he puts his hands on his hips one way and one way only and just will sit there and pace back and forth. And we're like, just slow down. Like, just stop well, moving. Fun of me for that. <laughs> and well, so – it, it She said it looks really stupid. <laughs> so, I've got to say help that, uh, the habit. I've got to yeah. say, Coach Bradley, it's got to be awesome coaching girls because I could just imagine if we had a like a baseball coach on here and one of them's trying to tell a story on that, like it would not go well the next day of practice. No, no. So that's awesome. The team chemistry here, we can tell. I mean, yeah. it's phenomenal. Y'all got a great program going on over there. Well, and we want to thank all of y'all for coming on and joining us tonight. Zoe, congratulations on hitting another milestone. Okay. And, thank you. Uh, Coach, I mean, it just seems like every time y'all take the field, there's something new that's coming out of Heritage. And do you want to speak on that before we go? I mean, it's just like another record falls. Another thing happens that's a program first. Well, that's what we – I mean, We've never won a, a playoff game here, and, and that's a, a big goal of ours is, is to win a playoff series or a playoff game if we're playing a one game. But, you know, that's that's been our goal. That was our goal last year when our, our season got cut down and then, you know, this year. So I think it'll be, like I said, if, if we can we can do it. I mean, we got the capability of, of uh, getting hot and, and making a little run, but it starts with that first one. we gotta, we got to really focus on the first playoff opponent and then, uh, you know, that's a big goal of ours is to win that first series. Well, awesome, awesome. Well, ladies and coach, we appreciate y'all taking time out of your evenings. Uh, we wish you the best of luck. Uh, as soon as we find out whatever uh, and whenever that game is for your by district round, we'll post it. We'll be all on it. We'll have people out to shoot it. We wish y'all nothing but the best. And go get that first playoff uh, series win. And more importantly, Man, go, go try to win the whole thing. I know you will, but we want to see it happen. So thank you all so much, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you all for having us. Are you run down, tired, muscles sore? Well, choose Elite Foot and Body, therapeutic massage and assisted stretching. They provide cupping, couples massage, foot massage, assisted stretching, ultrasound therapy, and much more. So when you want to feel like your old self, go spend a little time with the great folks at Elite Foot and Body Massage.
hungry for the best burgers, fries, and pizza in Ellis County, well, stop by Doe City Pizza and Burgers, where the ingredients are fresh every day and stacked up just the way you like. Custom seasoned fries and burgers right off the grill on in-house fresh homemade buns. So head on down to Doe City Pizza and Burgers where everything there is delicious. Doe City Pizza and Burgers is located in Red Oak, Texas, right across from Red Oak High School. Make sure you come down and have the best burgers and service in Ellis County. We are welcoming in Red Oak Lady Hawks softball team. We got Coach Rogers. We got Michaela Kelly, we got McKinnon Maines and Dylan Brown joining us. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your evenings. Coach, I'm going to start with you. Uh, 15 and 5 on the year, 8-2 district, and you're leading district, so it seems like you're having a pretty good season. Talk about how you feel things are going, especially in the lead up to the start of the playoff. I think things are going really well. Um, our, kids are, our kids have responded well to uh, all the practices we've had and the leadership from our coaching staff and from our senior players. And, um, you know, they, we put them in the right position to go out there and do the best they can. And the last three or four weeks, it seems like um, we've found a way to win a lot of games and uh, they've been able to execute on the field when it matters most, uh, especially late in ball games. And uh, we've been on the winning end of a lot of those close games in the last couple of weeks. And in this, their, per their preparation has been great. And um, it's just it's, it's it's good to see it show on the field and in, in the win loss column. Well, McKinnon, y'all are doing it every way on offense. You got a little small ball. You got a little punch out to the outfield. Just how good does it feel to have those bats going the way that y'all do right now? Um, it feels good. Um, we really do a good job of supporting each other and keep each other motivated and just keep the ball rolling as we keep our heads going. Nice. Well, Dylan, when, when you tow the rubber and step in that circle, how good does it feel and kind of take the weight off your shoulders, one, when your offense is scoring runs, but two, when you've got a great defense behind you, you got people like Michaela, you got McKinnon that are, that are stopping balls, that are getting outs for you. How much easier does it make you feel when you're, when you're out there towing the rubber? No, it definitely – it makes me feel like they have my back. And if I do mess up, I don't have to worry about it. I can just shake it off because they'll be there to support me and we'll get through it. Well, Makala, we want to bring up something here tonight. Uh, 120 singles in your career. 508 batting average. Okay, that smile to me says pretty much everything right there. <laughs> but for those younger viewers out there, those little kids, can you tell them the hard work and the dedication that it's taken to reach that high? It's definitely taken a lot of hard work and dedication from literally just staying um, an extra 15 minutes after practice to going out on a weekend and asking your dad or your little sister or something like a family member to just help you out to just get those extra reps in. And even if you're not having a good hitting day or something just doesn't feel right, just getting that one extra bucket or that few uh, couple of balls, every little thing helps. Well, Coach, I know you've got a lot of players like this, and it's got to be a great feeling that they're there early for practice. They want to stay late. They want to do all the right things. How great is it to have a group of ladies that are this dedicated to their craft? Well, it's amazing. It makes my job easier. Um, you know, when you when you challenge them with things to do on their own and, and you don't get pushback from it, they, you know, they, they have that internal motor where they want to get better. Um, they don't take it as a burden. They, they see it as a challenge and an opportunity to get better. And so – uh, you know, that's one thing I think these seniors have kind of left their mark on this team that I think our underclassmen, um, as we finish the, the playoffs this year and look towards next year as well, that that the expectation is there to work hard in the summer, um, to do things on your own, even when the coaching staff's not there, when the field's open and you have the opportunity to get better, to not waste it. So I think a lot of our younger kids have seen these seniors do that, and then they've seen the success that's come from that. They haven't you know, it's, it's one thing to go put a lot of work in 
But then if you don't see that uh, play out in games, then, you know, some kids might think that that, well, it was kind of a waste of time. But when they see our seniors have a lot of success as a team and also as an individual, then, you know, they see that that, that hard work's worth it. Um, when, when it's, you know, it's really, it's a hundred degrees in the summer and they don't necessarily want to be out there, but, um, but they do. And, and they, they have led by example these last couple of years. And so, um, I think it's kind of the expectation of our kids that, Hey, when, when, um, all season rolls around, the expectation is you stay because the older kids have done that. Um, not necessarily because the coaches are forcing us to, but because they've seen that success. So, so yeah, it, it makes my life a lot easier and our job a lot easier when, when the kids genuinely want to be there on their own to get better. Well, McKinnon, coming to you as a senior, uh, part of the senior group, when you are dealing with a team that you've got younger ladies on the team as far as freshmen and sophomores, we're talking about building that chemistry, especially after last season when you lose pretty much your whole year. So you're thrust into the senior leadership role. How key and how crucial has it been that, that the younger girls have bought in to what the team philosophy is, what you guys are trying to work towards that has helped y'all now get to a point where it seems like everybody is meshed together and you're playing at the best of your ability. Yeah, the underclassmen have done a really good job of just kind of understanding um, the upperclassmen and how bad we want to win. And they just kind of took on and like looked after us. And it is really crucial that they come in with the mindset that they want to have a starting position. They want to work hard, and that's what we need is work hard working players. And so they did a good job of coming in and wanting a spot on the team. Now, Dylan, you're a sophomore, correct? Mm-hmm. Now, so you're coming in, and you got to be on the first – you got your freshman year pretty much taken away from you due to outside circumstances. Um, but now you're thrust into the middle of it. And you've got a pretty big responsibility because you're, you're going out to that circle night in and night out. Talk about, one, coming up as a sophomore, but this is really your first full year, stepping out there, competing, and then what the seniors have meant to help build you up to make you more confident. Well, last year, um, I, I didn't really get a season. And when I did start, it was like one district game maybe. So I didn't really get the feel of what it – like what it's really like and this year just like being able to be a part of it is it's crazy like honestly the feeling is you can't really describe it because it's so much different than just select ball or anything like that but the seniors they really helped me and like because I I don't know what it was like but they helped me to be confident and be able to be a part of it because without them like I wouldn't I wouldn't know what to do with that. I would probably just get overwhelmed with all the um, tough games. Like, I wouldn't have been able to get through it. Well, and McCalla, you know, been around the county for a while. And Red Oak's had some great teams over the years. You had back when Ireland O'Rear was pitching for Red Oak. Uh, you know, y'all have got some great players on this team. As a senior with, with y'all two on here, how great is it to leave such a great mark in the history of Red Oak softball? Um, it's a great feeling. Um, it's very, I don't want to say it puts pressure on us, but it's, it kind of um, makes us want to be better people because we know that there are people looking up to us and um, especially like underclassmen and freshmen coming in. We know that they're looking at us even though they're not intending to and they're just kind of like following in our footsteps and just trying to figure out where they fit in the pattern. But it's honestly a really great feeling to know that someone is looking up to us and um, yeah. Okay. Well, Coach, you know, one of the big things that I think gets overlooked with y'all is y'all can flash the leather. Y'all have got one of, I think it's one of the best infields in the county. You know, talk about just, you know, what y'all are doing to make that a more prevalent thing and how y'all are getting those outs early and helping out your pitching staff. Well, I think, I think the, you know, defense, I think always starts in the circle. Um, you know, when, when these kids came, when, when Mikayla and Bree and, as our middle infielders and then McKinnon playing on the, on the corners. When, we, when they came in as freshmen, we, we struggled in the circle pitching. We struggled throwing strikes, and we scored a ton of runs. We scored even more runs their, their freshman and sophomore year than we scored, uh, scored this year. 
And, uh, but you know, when you, when you give up a lot of walks and you, and you give up a lot of balls over the plate that are hit really hard, you can't always outscore everybody. Um, and so this year, you know, the pitching, it has to start into their circle and Dylan's done a great job of that, of just not leaving things over the plate. And so it forces the other people to hit, you know, the other team to hit the ball off the end of the bat, off their hands, um, hit balls. They don't necessarily want to hit. And then, then, yeah, then we got to play defense behind it. And it, I think it starts up the middle. You know, Mikayla and Brianna Evans have both been there for four years together. And so, you know, they, they could probably play and football to each other blindfolded. You know, they, they've done that for so long together. And, uh, you know, my job now getting into the playoffs, I think, is just to get them reps. You know, we're not doing anything new. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. It's just how many reps can we get them in practice? You know, can we make sure they have what they need so that they're comfortable tomorrow night playing Corsicana? Uh, you know, nothing new, nothing spectacular, just, you know, rolling ground balls, hitting ground balls, um, turning double plays, just all the normal things that you would do if you were teaching a, a little 10 U team, nothing, nothing different, nothing special, but just the, the number of reps that they need to make sure they're ready to play at a high level tomorrow night. And, um, you know, when you've got kids that have done it for that many years together, um, you know, it shows that confidence shows that their, their ability to calm each other down when things aren't going great. Um, you know, and it's for every one of them, not just Dylan in the circle, but for all of them to be able to have that reassuring presence next to you playing defense because they've been there for four years with you is, is, a, is a huge comfort on the field. Um, and that's something that, you know, next year we'll have to try to uh, – how, how do we replace that? You know, we have to do a lot of work, hard work in the offseason to be able to replace that for these seniors that we have um, this year. But, yeah, going, going forward for this year, it's, it's – uh, it's, gives everybody a lot of confidence when you know that uh, when ground balls are hit, when balls are put in play, that the plays are going to be made behind you. And McKinnon, y'all are in a tough, tough district between Joshua, Corsicana, uh, Middle Othian, Ennis. I mean, you, that's a lot of good softball, a lot of history of good softball. Talk about how it makes you guys feel. You're in first place, so you've had, and you've had to fight to earn that. But when you're playing good teams night it's in not- and night out, how much more confidence that gives you that now that you are getting to the playoffs and you got that playoff scenario where it's going to be win or go home, that playing a tough schedule throughout the season, being in that tough district, makes it – I don't want to say makes it easier, but it helps relax you and, and like you've been there before. It felt so good to just beat Midlothian, Joshua, and Ennis and all of them just because I we know most of the girls that played on those teams. And so just to kind of like not rub it in their face, but just kind of brag about it and the hard work and dedication that it took to get us to where we are, um, it's unbelievable. And just to know that we have a good pitcher in the mound and a good defense and a good offense, it's really refreshing to just be able to rely on your teammates that you know that they're going to go out there and put in the same – 100% amount of work that you plan on putting in while you play. So it's it's a great feeling. Well, Makala, we know a lot about what y'all do on the field. You know, but we don't know a lot about what happens, you know, when everybody's not around watching. So can you tell us one thing about Coach Rogers that the general public would not know? <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> He, he won't make you run tomorrow. We promise. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing about Coach Rogers. Is he a good dancer? Does he got funny jokes? He has really corny jokes. He has, like, the dad jokes. Like, randomly, it'll just pop in there, and everybody's just like, what just happened? Like, like what did he just say and he the jokes um just randomly pop in and he he kind of gets um all of us and so he knows like the teenage slang or whatever it's called so he'll just like laugh with the rest of us when the team jokes are around that's awesome awesome well dylan uh i want to know uh who when y'all are going on these bus rides these long bus rides um, and then now you're going to get into the playoffs. So everybody's going to be hyped. Who are the girls on the team that are bringing the speaker, blasting the music, doing TikToks, <laughs> trying to get Coach Rogers to dance? Who are the girls getting everybody riled up on the bus rides? Well, the people getting everybody riled up is definitely McKinnon. <laughs> McKinnon and Bree. And just recently we started bringing this really big speaker with us. 
So it's turned all the way up on the bus and everybody's just getting involved. And I'm, it's really helping us grow as a team, like just the little things like that. Are we talking like boombox over the shoulder big or? Yes. All right. All right. See, that's my generation. That's, that's up here, baby. <laughs> Coach Rogers, do you know the music they're playing? Uh, some of it, I try to ignore it. I usually have my headphones in listening to country music, so I try to tune it out as much as possible. <laughs> well, Coach Rogers, you know, like back to my question to the, to the ladies was, you know, what's one of the things about this team that the general public doesn't know that you're most proud of? Uh, I think I think they kind of hit on it earlier and just how much they have each other's back. You know, you, you know, I've got a lot of been doing this for a long time. This is my 12th year as a head coach. And, you know, you hear stories all the time from your coaching buddies that, you know, we've, we've I've met over the years that seems like they always have a lot of distractions. Um, not necessarily their own fault, but just it doesn't matter what it is that they've tried to eliminate distractions, but they always creep up. It might be playing time issues or – uh, things that go on off the field with select ball that creeps in or um, things that happen at school that are completely unrelated to softball, but it just you have distractions that, that keep your team from performing at a high level. And I hear those stories from those coaches, and it, it seems like you, see, you hear one or two every year, and you feel for them because you know their teams have worked hard, but there's always something lingering there that you always – you, know, you look back and you wonder how much those things um, affect their p performance on the field. And we just haven't had that. We haven't had those outside distractions that, that are keeping us from performing well. It's, it's like we talked early in the year about, about no matter what happens with COVID, no matter what happens, you got to keep moving forward. You, know, you can't control those things. Just keep taking another step forward. Keep trying to make the playoffs. That's our first goal. And these kids have done that. It doesn't, you know, no matter who gets the credit, no matter – what goes on, they've, they've buried their head and they, they just keep moving forward. And, and there's nothing more you can ask of them for, than that. Well, that's awesome. I'm knocking on wood for you, Coach, by the way. Yeah. And so, <laughs> but no, no, we, we, we appreciate y'all taking time out of your evenings again to come on with us. Everything you said, we can tell. And the team chemistry is great. It seems like it's a family. Uh, Coach Rogers, you've got a great bunch. And it seems like they, they respect you and everything that you do. And so, and it shows on the field. And, but we appreciate y'all taking time out of your evening. I know y'all play Course Can tomorrow night. I think you got Waco U, is it Friday? Is your last yes. one? And then it's yes. playoff bound. And so we want to congratulate you on the great season you're having thus far. And we can't wait to see what comes here in the future. Hopefully we can have y'all on again, maybe in the middle of a playoff push, maybe, maybe area, regional, or even state champs. So we thank y'all so much. And uh, y'all have a good evening. We'll see y'all on down the road. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We see the future in her. And as she grows, bonds are bigger. Lessons are learned. We plan for her future with those we trust. So when the day comes, and she's ready to soar. She'll do it knowing there's always someone there. Pinnacle Bank, not just a bank in Texas, but Texas in a bank. Member FDIC. Folks, well, we're talking Ennis Tennis right now with Zoe and Coach Howard. Y'all had a great district tournament. T tell us a little bit about it. Man, uh, um, you know, uh, could, couldn't really ask for anything more. Uh, we're going to be sending uh, 11 kids to regionals. And, um, you know, you'd like, to, you'd like to think it's just uh, skill, but uh, there was some luck involved. We, we won a lot of close matches and, and old, old Midlothian and Corsicana really just gave us fits. And we, we never thought in our wildest dreams we'd send 11 kids to regionals. But, uh, man, we just uh, – like I said, I think we got a little lucky, and uh, that always helps. And uh, so we have uh, no, no complaints uh, whatsoever. Of course, there's always kids that, you know, 
we'd like to think we could have done a little better, but uh, not to be greedy, we're, we're uh, super satisfied. Well, Zoe, it seemed like your serve was on the entire time for district. My serve? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I guess it was a pretty good serving day. <laughs> um, I well, think, that's what Leslie told me. Well, I think um, – I always tell Josh that um, when we play together, uh, we always win my serve games pretty good, but I always tell him it's not really because my serve, which I've a, I, I'd say I have a pretty good serve. I can place it and get the point started, but Josh is just really good at the net, and so – yeah, he puts balls away, and it makes it seem like it's my serve, but it's really him at the net that makes us win the game so easily. Well, Zoe, don't don't be so humble here. When you're playing mixed doubles like that, if you don't hit the spot on the serve to get the re rally back towards him, <laughs> he doesn't have that net play, correct? Yeah, that is true. Okay, I'm not going to let you be that humble because y'all yeah. y'all did it outstanding. Okay, thank well, you. Well, coach. Appreciate it. You know, appreciate. Let's it. talk about the rest of these kids real quick. You know, you you've had an amazing season as usual out of NS Tennis, but the rest of these kids, it just seems like you had a couple of kids that, or at least a couple of teams that really reached a new level at this tournament. Well, you know, you know, to be honest with you, somebody was asking me the other day, like, uh, you know, I think Zoe and Josh get a lot of a lot of the publicity and everything because they're the number one players, so. So everybody kind of kind of thinks they're the big shot, you know, to go to state and everything. And you you, you really just don't know. And in, in, in Region Two, it is it is so tough. You, you never know where the players are at. So you know, we got we got a guy's singles. We've got two mixed doubles. We got a girls doubles. We've got two boys doubles. And um, that just you know, every time we got two in a draw, I think that just doubles our chances because in, in this region, it's so tough. And then some of it, like I said, I, I wasn't being humble. Sometimes it comes to luck of the draw. And that's kind of how it was at district some. And, and and I'm not saying we're just banking on luck. Of course, you know, you got you to work hard to be able to be there. But, you know, when you're, when you're talking about the Highland Parks and the Frisco's and the McKinney's and Texas High, like, there's so many people that could, um, you know, go to state. And, and, and historically, I would say um, the people that go to state out of our region, I, I, I would say they win state. 75% of the time. I, I would say we have, we have the toughest, um, toughest region in the state. So I, I wish I could tell you, you know, it, it could be like, a, you know, people probably aren't looking at, at Riley Boston and Nick Sidopoli because they're like the number two team and, and, and Zoe and them beat them pretty handily in district. But when it comes to regionals, you know, if they get the right draw, somebody's still going to have to beat them, you know, and, and I, I'd like to, I'd like to think of that with, with all our players. There are going to be some tough outs, and we'll just see. You know, uh, I tell I, I feel like we're playing with house money right now. People, we're not the big dog anymore in district. People are trying to beat in us, and now we're at regionals. Man, we're the underdog. We're going to embrace that status and, and see if we can just go uh, mess up people's year, to be honest. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, that's okay. You know, like yeah. we keep saying, Coach, we said this a bunch of times. Anybody above 20 needs to lose tennis, right? That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, Zoe, you know, this is a little bit different time of year for y'all. Y'all can mm -hmm. actually have somebody over by your court cheering for you, you know, like um, the other teams that are there with you. Does that help you out a little bit, knowing that you got a little bit of a cheering section and getting that energy from each other and giving that energy to the other teams? Yeah, I think it does, and I think um, – like Ennis, like our team, I think we do a really good job of just like genuinely cheering, like and really being into the match. And um, like at district, we got to do that because there was so many matches to put on. So there was lots of waiting around and watching. And most of us had a bye first round. So the people that didn't have, like, didn't have a bye first round, it was, uh, it was nice because we got to like all cheer for each other. And yeah, I think it does help a lot. Um, I think it makes a really big difference in a match. Awesome. In a close match, yeah. Well, Coach, you talked about, you know, luck of the draw and everything. But, you know, it just seems like y'all have a tendency to make your own luck over there in Ennis. And I think that – is that not, you know, the mindset that you've taught these young people? Yeah, and, and, and I'll tell you, you know, and this – I don't know what kind of answer this seems like, but, you know, it, it starts with the parents – and then, you know, I talk to a lot of coaches and, 
and everybody's got complaints about, you know, these kids nowadays, these kids nowadays. And it starts with the parents. And I, I'm just going to tell you, the, the parents in Ennis, because I'm not the easiest guy to get along with, they allow me to, to really coach their kids hard and, and uh, not toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm so tough on them. By the time we get to district, they're, they're thinking, you know, if something crazy happens, I, I know in the back of my mind they're thinking this ain't as tough as the other day at practice. And, and I think that's maybe why we come out, uh, come out on top in, in, in tight situations. And, uh, and, and the other thing, too, is, you know, the kids know that, like, I'm hard on them in practice. But when it comes to a tournament, it may sound dumb, but I could care less if they win or lose. If, if we go out there and compete, then, you know, the chips are going to fall where they may, and, and we can live with it uh, as long as we got a great relationship with our players. You know, you're, you're going to lose. Only one person is going to win the last match of the year. So, you know, you, you're preparing, you know, how are you going to react if all of a sudden it's not your day? And, and we kind of escaped with some of those in district. Uh, some of our players didn't play too well, uh, but was able to escape with like a third set win. And it was just, whew, that, you, you kind of get lucky, kind of get lucky sometimes. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it. Though. I just think we're, uh, we're allowed because all coaches would like to be able to be tough on the kids. And, and then it's the parents, man, they, they really allow us to coach their kids hard. And, and I, I just can't tell you how big that is. That, that's a huge, that's a huge advantage. Well, and Zoe, you know, you grin when, when he says he's tough on y'all during practice big time. But mm – -hmm. The, the thing I, I've got to say is what I've seen around when I've been able to come by a couple of times, right, is that players hold each other accountable. And how mm -hmm. big is that, that y'all have that internal thing, not just your coach, but each other holding each other accountable? Um, I think it's a big deal because, like, most of the time if someone's not at practice, we're like, oh, like, where's so-and-so? Or, like, when are they going to be back? Or, like, did they come hit this morning and stuff like that? Or – like, can we go hit this weekend? And I think we do a really good job of that because, I don't know, some teams I think it's, like, individual, especially in the springtime when it's not team tennis anymore. Like, people focus on themselves a lot more. But in Ennis, I don't think we do that. Like, the, over, over the weekends, like, the people that qualified were like, hey, like, our mixed doubles team, like, let's go play the twos or let's go play the number one girls or uh, the number two guys or the number one guys so then we can all get, like, a practice set in or something. So – it's individual, like, in the spring, but I think we still play, like, as a team, to be honest. And it's just it's just a family atmosphere. Like, yeah. you know, it's crazy. This year is not over with, and, and you have people talking about next fall, talking about the first yeah. match. We'll play Middle Lothian, and they're looking to break our streak, and, and some of these seniors aren't going to be there. And they're the ones saying, uh, it's not going to happen. I'm going to hit with you all this yeah. summer, and mm -hmm. we're going to make sure those underclassmen are prepared. It, it, it's just a it's it's a great atmosphere. Like I said, it starts with the parents, and uh, we, we got a great family atmosphere here. And, and just like a family, it ain't pretty. I'm gonna tell you that. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> we don't always agree, but but when you go to beat one of us, you're gonna have to beat all of us. Just yeah. plain and simple. Well, and coach, you know, I I got the luxury of being able to say this. I know. Do y'all have a mantra taking this, trying to take this all the way to state this year? Is there something that you've added on for the playoffs? Not really. I I don't I don't know if we have anything different uh, different this year okay. than, than and then any other year. You know, on on the back of our shirt, on one of our shirts, we always have for years. We've had embrace the struggle, and yeah. um, and that's just the deal. You know, every match, it, it ain't never gonna be easy. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets tough, there's some people that think, oh crap, it's getting tough. And, you know, I just try to teach the kids here and then is you got to be a little demented and think of it differently. And when stuff gets really crappy, you got to think, man, I love this. Th this is what it's all about. You know, whether we win or lose, you know, they're not worried about, you know, uh, Coach Howard be disappointed in them. That's not it at all. Yeah. And like you said, about them cheering for each other, like I always said, they, they got such a tight knit. I, I'll be honest with you, Tater. I, I guarantee, and this will this will drive people crazy. But I could drive the school bus up, drop them off, and they're gonna do just as good without me or Coach Johnson there, because they they're, they're so tight knit and cheer for each other. And I, I don't know how much of a part I really play in it on game day. Well, you know, and Zoe, you know, 
it, is it not a big deal to you just leaving the mark that y'all have? I mean, there's been teams before y'all. This 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 legacy's been going for a while now, but mm-hmm. being a part of it, you know, how special is it to take it to this length? Um, I don't know. I think I think it's pretty. To me, I think it's pretty special because growing up. Um, like as soon as like the streak started and stuff, which I didn't know it was a streak then, but um, like in intermediate school and then um, like in junior high, I would always go to the tennis center after uh, like after school. And so I got to like see the other teams work for it and like all they put into it. And so I guess like when it was my time, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to keep the streak going and stuff like that. I think it's pretty important. And I think um I think like we all work just like how he was saying with the underclassmen and stuff like that. Not in like a, Oh, like y'all can't lose it. Or I think y'all are going to lose it. So we're going to work harder. It's not that type of thing. It's just like, yeah, we'll, we'll lose it one day. Just, yeah. It's just, 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 hope, just hope we're not today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, well, coach, you've got some great kids there. You've mentioned your parents being great. I know you get a lot of support from the ISD. Um, you know, we, we honestly believe, and I believe, that, you know, we have the best coaches in Ellis County, and you're a prime example of why we say that. Uh, you're well, good I, for the sport. You're I good for the students. It. And, you know, that's the biggest two things. And and, I, and I'll be honest. You know, we've talked about before off off camera, you know, oh, oh Sam in Middle Lothian, he, he, he makes you work harder because you know how bad he wants to beat you. And Chad over there in Corsicana, same thing. I'm talking uh, – there's not a year goes by that I think, okay, this is the year they're going to get us. And, and they'll get us one year, and I'm not going to be disappointed about it. I mean, he can't win every time, but but we're going we're gonna to try to. We're going to keep trying, and and we're going to work hard. And, and, and if they're going to beat us, then hopefully they, you know, they had to work harder than us. So I, I don't know if that's possible, but I'm sure it will happen one day. Well, I want to wish you all the best as you all go through region and hopefully the state. And know that we're there to support y'all in any way, shape, or form. And we got you back on the on this side of things. And uh, just can't wait to see how far y'all can take this thing this year. Thank uh, you. We can't tell you how much we appreciate it, Taylor. So we're, we're going to try to represent Ellis County best we can. There we go. Folks, if you don't know about this, get out there and watch some of these tennis players. We got some highlights coming. I'll give you one of these right there for you, Coach. But All right. uh, we've got some great kids out there that are – you know, really working hard. Folks, make sure you make it out to some of these tennis matches. There's a lot of stuff. Some of these kids compete UTR locally and stuff like that. You can make it out there. And we got news later on for an Ellis County uh, fundraiser that we're going to be doing this summer uh, yes, with sir. all the schools. And uh, stay tuned for that as well. Coach, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Appreciate and we'll see you down the road. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Are you run down, tired? Muscles sore? Well, choose Elite Foot and Body, therapeutic massage and assisted stretching. They provide cupping, couples massage, foot massage, assisted stretching, ultrasound therapy, and much more. So when you want to feel like your old self, go spend a little time with the great folks at Elite Foot and Body Massage.